Okay, hold on. Does a cirrus really land flat? Well, it's episode one, and we're already getting controversial. Here's your flight fix. I'll talk us through it, okay? And we'll do it together. That's right, welcome to the inaugural episode of the Cirrus Approach Flight Fix. It's the bite-sized flight training show dedicated to pilots who never stop learning. Okay, so what exactly is the dramatic controversy here? Well, if you've ever flown a Cirrus, and we're hoping that you have, there's a good chance that at some point somebody along the way has told you to watch your flare on landing, that a Cirrus likes to land flat, or at least flatter than other aircraft. All right, let's dig in a little bit. That means we're gonna need to go to the hangar. Like our hangar? We built it ourselves. It's pretend. See? This sort of landing debate is really just the sign of a healthy passion and curiosity for all those subtle and kind of crazy details that pilots need to consider when landing any airplane. And it's great. We love it. But to get right after it, when landing a Cirrus, or any tricycle gear airplane for that matter, you just simply want to achieve the proper nose high pitch attitude prior to touchdown. That's the quick and simple answer. The beauty of a great landing really is in finding that sweet spot where the touchdown just kind of feels perfect. Main wheels first, followed by a gentle kiss of the nose wheel. Now everything up until the flare is kind of procedural, it's kind of mechanical, but the flare really becomes kind of an art form and this is where debate can happen and things can get a little hazy. And so judging this sweet spot is all about developing the correct sight picture, the perception of the perfect pitch attitude for touchdown. Now that's as viewed directly from your line of sight. In any airplane, your perception is shaped by your surroundings. As you transition from one airplane to another, the landing, the flare process can feel and appear just a little bit different. Even a small seat adjustment in the plane that you fly every day can alter your perception, and it can give you that illusion of a little bit of a different pitch attitude for landing. So let's hit that original question again. Does the Cirrus land flat? Does it exhibit a relatively lower deck angle during flare and touchdown? Sorry to let you down, but the answer is no. Might you perceive that it lands flat? Well, as always in a discussion like this, it depends. If you're stepping up to a Cirrus from another single engine aircraft, chances are it might feel a little flatter during flare because of the increased forward visibility that is achieved by the Cirrus cockpit and cowl design. And this would especially be the case during normal 100% flap landings where your deck angle at touchdown is minimized and the visibility is maximized. And that's really the entire reason that we always try to land flaps 100 if we can for that better pitch visibility during flare. And so Cirrus aircraft are unique, but certainly not alone, in that you sit a little higher, almost on top of the wing, giving you a view down the engine cowling sort of from above. And if you're transitioning, let's say, from a multi-engine aircraft, as an example, where the absence of an engine directly in front of the cockpit naturally creates better forward visibility, then you're gonna maybe feel a little more at home. Your perception may be unchanged, and the pitch attitude during that flare may feel a little bit more normal. Now, a fantastic example of where you might find a little bit of a different sight picture would be that of the Vision Jet. Now, that airplane has a huge bubble windscreen with incredible forward visibility, and there's very little obstruction to the pilot's view of the landing environment. And so the first time you land the Vision Jet, it can feel a little different. The flare can feel a little flat. If you find yourself with that flat feeling, the quickest way to become more comfortable with the proper pitch attitude for touchdown in whatever specific airplane you're flying, the solution is to go and knock out some landings, do some touchdowns, over and over, repeat it, get a feel for what that visual looks like. Find the sight picture for that airplane. Use your forward and peripheral vision to help judge your pitch attitude during the flare. Make tiny corrections as you progress from one landing to the next until you feel like you're really hitting that sweet spot and that you've got it just right and are consistently touching down main wheels first. And remember, the place where you can really calibrate that flare angle, the place where it's gonna be an optimal flare attitude is if you hold the back pressure and you hold it and you hold it and you wait until you get that quick chirp of the stall warning horn just prior to main wheel touchdown. As you're practicing and you begin to hear that chirp in the flare, Stall. 
Look up, burn that sight picture into your head. That's your best touchdown attitude in your Cirrus, or any airplane for that matter. And don't be overly concerned about a prop or a tail strike. An actual strike on landing is, there's only a chance of that occurring if a landing is allowed to progress significantly outside of that normal approach and landing envelope. Like when a pilot attempts to save what is otherwise an unstable approach and landing, which could perhaps result in a bounce or oscillating porpoise effect that could lead to other bad things if it were continued. And of course, in aviation, we all know the best way to avoid any event like that is during an unstable approach or landing where something just doesn't feel right, go around. We have a bird, we're going around. Okay, that wraps up the first episode of the Cirrus Approach Flight Fix. Make sure to follow us online, and if you have some awesome ideas for content you'd love for us to cover in the future, or for any comments, questions, biting critiques, or loving praise, send us a note to learning at cirrusaircraft.com. Hey everybody, I'm Dan Malott. I'm a Cirrus Standardized Instructor Pilot with Valley In-Flight Training. Today we're actually flying our family's twin Cessna back from Wisconsin Dells, Wisconsin up to Grand Forks, North Dakota. We're somewhere at 20,000 feet. It's a beautiful day to go flying. I'd like you to always remember that learning is a lifestyle and I'll see you at the next fix.